Yeah, thank you so much, Adam, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation. I'm very happy that I'm here and I will present the work that I have done uh, in my PhD so far. So let me share my screen first. Um, yeah, uh, as Adam said, uh, the title of my PhD is related to modeling of biodegradation. And uh, that was the initial goal was that of that was to model personalized printed implants. I will also talk a little bit about this kind of implants and the role that they have in uh, orthopedics. But generally I will try to be as general as possible in this presentation. So avoid really going to the details. So it might be useful or at least something that people from different backgrounds can follow. Uh, yeah, so let me start uh, a little bit with, with myself. Uh, so uh, yeah, my, my name is Mojtawa, as, as I said, and Adam also said, I, uh, I am from Persia, Iran, beautiful Iran. I was born in the capital, Tehran, uh, the big city, very populated city, a city that doesn't have an end, the city that never sleeps. Uh, but then in 2018, I decided to go abroad and continue my uh, studies in Belgium, in Leuven. Uh, at KU Leuven, uh, but since uh, my wife is a PhD student at the University of Eindhoven, TUE, our life is divided into two parts, 50% in Eindhoven and 50% in Leuven. And in uh, Leuven, I'm doing a PhD on uh, biomedical engineering. My background is also on biomedical engineering and also a bit material science, but uh, don't take it wrong. I'm mostly a modeler and that's where I've spent most of my life on computer keyboards and computer world. So yeah, my skills in experimental works is relatively shallow. Although when people yeah, hear, about, hear about biomedical engineering, that's the first thing that they think about. And if I wanna describe myself, I would say that, yeah, I'm a big fan of open source philosophy uh, and I'm an open source advocate and evangelist, let's say. And I also love to play a lot of games on top of which is chess. And one of the problems that I have is I cannot stop watching chess tournaments on TV or online. And one of the things that my, life, my wife complains a lot about. And uh, in addition to that, I also love music. I love to listen to music. I love to play music. I love to read about music. And this is, uh, yeah, th 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 this uh, picture is from a band that we have in uh, in Leuven and we have gigs every now and then as a kind of folk music. And this is our research group uh, uh, under supervision of Professor Lisbeth Chiris, which is actually uh, divided into three different locations. And we are more than, yeah, more or less around 30 researchers. And uh, I, I say three different locations because yeah, we are uh, actually at KU Leuven and at University of Liege, but also at University of Leuven. KU Leuven, we are divided into two parts. People are in the biomedical sciences campus in the hospital and some in the engineering campus. And the main focus of the group is on computational biomechanics uh, and computational tissue engineering, but it it, it, it covers a broad range of different topics, you know, from cellular level to the really the clinical trials and aspect and those kind of aspects. So the focus of the group is uh, quite broad, I can say. But that was a uh, not so short introduction. Uh, and I think that's time to go for some science. Um, the goal of the project, the focus of the project is on biodegradable metals. So I first, uh, I start first with some definition of a biodegradable metals. And we mean that we, the kind of material that we put inside a body as implant or as a medical device, and then they degrade eventually. So the definition says that the material is expected to corrode. So corrosion is another term for biodegradation. So they can be used uh, interchangeably and it should have a, a, it should receive appropriate host response, appropriate response from the host. In this case, it's body. And also, it should be metabolized. Means that it should contribute to the 
body metabolism and biological and chemical reactions that are going on there. But it also be dissolved, as I said, it should be dissolved upon fulfilling the mission, which is usually the, to assist the tissue healing process like in orthopedics or cardiovascular applications. So this is the definition of uh, biodegradable metals. And this, this is, you know, this doing research on that requires just working on lots of fields. That's uh, the making it on multidisciplinary, generally biomedical engineering is a multidisciplinary field. And this, this figure demonstrate that, that, yeah, for just studying the biodegradation, biodegradable metals, we need to deal with the chemistry, we need to deal with the biology, and we should consider the clinical aspects of it and also the material science parts and these kind of things. And also sometimes biomechanics is also added to this and some biophysics aspects. So uh, some of the properties that are very important for a material to be considered as biodegradable, there are a wide range of different materials and in this case metals in the world, but in order to consider them as biodegradable metals, they should be 100% or let's say they should be biodegradable and they should be biocompatible. And this has, this, these things uh, have different aspects that should be considered. But in addition to that, the, the properties of the metals are actually the subject of various research works. So each of these blocks can be actually uh, the subject of a work either experimentally or computationally, like for chemical properties, it deals with the biodegradability or ion release pH changes, or biological properties, which is actually related to the host response, physical properties and mechanical properties. Most of the things that I wanna discuss in this presentation are related to chemical properties because biodegradation and corrosion are mainly some chemical phenomena, we can say, we can classify them in this direction, in this way. But I will also talk a little bit about biological properties. This, is, this has been also part of my PhD. And I have also done some work, some primary basic work on mechanical properties in, in, this, in my PhD, let's say. So by saying all these uh, things, we can say that biodegradable metals are uh, uh, magnesium, zinc, and iron. These three materials are the one that they have that they, that have the, the all the properties that expected to expected from a biodegradable metal. And they are potential. They are really suitable for various applications, especially in orthopedics and cardiovascular cases, as you can see here. And they are divided into, for example, as you can see here, potential applications and clinical trials and the ones that are currently commercially approved. But the thing is the release profile should be controlled and should be tuned based on the application actually. And this is still an issue that, okay, for different materials, for different applications, according to the rate of the new tissue growth can be bone or any other tissue, the rate of the material degradation should be tuned. And uh, as an example on this, I wanna say uh, the, the primary, actually the goal of the project that I was hired on, it was a, a kind of European project working on personalized printed implants for heat arthroplasty. And I wanna describe that, what, what, is, uh, what is that actually? And then uh, the disease that we, went, we, went, we wanted to study and we are going to study and also the role of biodegradable implants in this regard, biodegradable materials. So osteoarthritis, as you may have heard about, is the most common form of, or let's say most common, uh, yeah, de uh, degenerative disease. And it's the leading cause of disability in people with over 50 years of age. And in this disease is actually the, uh, the protective layer at the end of the bone called cartilage it wearing down and as a result, it causes inflammation, pain, and loss of mobility in the patients. So in HIP, it, it has different kinds, but in hip arthritis, the cartilage that lines, uh, that covers actually the acetabulum here or hip socket and covers the ball shaped femoral head 
becomes inflamed like this. The inflamed cartilage degenerates over time and it narrows the space that is normally there. New cartilage may grow, yeah, but this new cartilage is usually bumpy and irregular. So eventually the, the, the cartilage will disappear completely and it causes further friction. And as I say, lots of pain and lots of problem for the patient during uh, movement. Yeah, the solution to the surgery is called total hip replacement or hip arthroplasty in which the damage zone is replaced with an implant. So in the surgery, in, in, the, in, the, in the procedure, the damaged head of the femur is removed. And then the surgeon carefully clears all the damaged cartilage from the hip socket. A metal socket is placed there in the cavity as well as a liner. And then the end of the femur is hollowed up and a long narrow implant, I would call it stem, along with a ball on top is inserted, is placed there. And as a result, the functionality of the joint is restored. Okay, that looks very cool, but then what is the problem here? The problem is uh, the implants should be removed at the end of, they have, yeah, limited lifetime and they should be removed at the end, removed and replaced at the end of the lifetime, requiring, requiring a second surgery actually. But in this second surgery, part of the newly formed bone is also removed and it makes it difficult to achieve further mechanical stability. One of the solutions in this regard is to make at least part of the implant from biodegradable materials. In this case, it can be the back of the metal of the, the, the socket of the head, which can be replaced by the new bone. And that's why we say this, this is personalized because this is the geometry and the topology and the shape of these implants are actually developed to fit the patient's body or patient's anatomy. And that's why we call it uh, patient specific. That was the, the goal of the whole project. And I was focused on the biodegradation part. So the challenge that we have is actually tuning the degradation rate to the rate of re regeneration of the new tissue and bone. And also optimizing the implant design based on this tuned release rate and profile. This has been done, instead of doing experiments in vivo and in vitro experiments, this has been done by doing some mathematical modeling of the biodegradation phenomenon that allows us to couple the models later with tissue growth models, some other models that are available in the tissue engineering field, and also consider the environmental effects for like in vivo tests or in vitro tests. The way that this research were, uh, is organized is uh, through a couple of packages, work packages. And work package one, I developed a biodegradation framework, a general biodegradation framework to simulate the corrosion and degradation for in vitro cases. And also it can be used also for in vivo. But then some physics were added to that. In tissue engineering, it's very common to study things, to study, for example, cell culture conditions, cell proliferation. When they wanna develop an artificial organ, they do it inside a device called bioreactor. And when the bioreactor has a kind of work, uh, sorry, fluid flow to remove the waste and add more nutrients and stuff, they call it perfusion. So in order to add, add at the physics of perfusion, I needed to add uh, like fluid flow models to the core model to be able to capture this effect. But also as part of the goal of the, as, as the goal of the project was to tune the degradation to the rate of the new tissue. It was also necessary to add the tissue uh, growth models to the core model. And since I will show you, since these models are developed all in house, the work package four was core development and parallelization that was also essential. And there, uh, I will talk about the reasons. And although this framework was developed initially 
with the orthopedic applications in mind for biodegradation, but the output of it can be generalized. Like it can be used for other applications for shape and topology optimization, design optimization, corrosion tuning, and control release. So this can be, you know, this can be used as a general framework for corrosion and biodegradation. The typical workflow in this kind of projects, yeah, you, you, you all know about it, but it is, project and generally the typical projects are life sciences are converted to mathematical sciences to sorry to mathematical models and the mathematical models to computational models so in this work done the life sciences for work package one was the chemistry of biodegradation in work package two it was physics of perfusion fluid flow and in work package three it was the biology of tissue growth and for the mathematical models which was actually the representation, the mathematical representation of these things uh, were mainly partial differential equations, uh, mainly reaction diffusion convection equations, and also Navier Stokes equations to describe the Floyd flow and some interface tracking techniques to track the change of morphology of the implant or medical device over time. And in this case, they were mostly level set and phase field methods. And for computational models, these equations were solved using a combination of finite elements and finite difference methods, with a combination of parallel computing libraries and open source solvers. So that was a, uh, an, an introduction to the, to the goals and um, the objective of the project. And then I started with uh, uh, some of the details of the by degradation for work in work package one. Um, and then, yeah, I will also talk a little bit about work package four in this presentation. So for the chemistry of biodegradation, you know, the model should capture different aspects of this process. The most essential one is the chemistry of the solution of the metallic implants. In this case, we want to study magnesium as an example. So the, the way that the magnesium is dissolved, the way that it reduces the water, and then it produces some ions in the medium. And these ions can be combined to form some protective layers on the surface of these implants. In this case, magnesium oxide and magnesium hydroxide. And these things will decrease the degradation rate because they, they, for, they act like a protective layer. But in the presence of certain ions in the medium, these films can be dissolved, can be eliminated and increasing again the rate of degradation. So generally the model should capture all this kind of, iteratively all this phenomena together. And also change of pH or any other side effects should be captured as well, because this is very essential, was essential for us to validate the models. And then this chemistry should be converted to mathematics, meaning that the, the chemical interaction should be represented in the mathematical forms. And as I said, this has been done by a set of reaction diffusion, convection, partial differential equations for each of the involved components. For example, for magnesium ions, as I said, there are different components and I don't wanna to go to the details of this mathematical modeling, but the way that we track the change of concentration of magnesium ions in the medium is through such an equation in which we describe how the magnesium diffuses through the space. This is the responsibility of this term, how it's get convected by an external velocity field. Like, as I said, by the perfusion cases in perfusion bioreactors and how it reacts with other components, with other chemical components. But was, what was also very essential in this work was capturing the moving interface because the interface here the interface I'm talking about is actually the interface between the, the implant, so the surface of the implant and the surrounding environment. It can be the body, it can be like the electrolyte in, in, in a corrosion test or anything else. That was essential to capture this, to see what happens to the implant, how it, uh, actually how the morphology changes over time. And for doing this, uh, we did, uh, again, another, uh, mathematical representation, this time of the interface. So interface in this work is a mathematical entity 
that is defined by using an equation. I will just quickly show you the equation as well. But then we correlate the movement of this interface to the rate of material release. That the material is released, is part of the corrosion, and then the interface moves with a certain velocity called V in this case. The technique that we use for this is called uh, level set method to track the, uh, uh, as I said, moving corrosion front. And yeah, technically speaking, this is called implicit tracking because we wanna track the interface using a function. And a function comes from the level set method. You may have heard about this technique that is used usually for interface tracking. Every, in any problem that you have, two phases, you can employ this technique. And in this case, this is very important that you, how you describe the problem in this case, uh, the velocity of the interface. So if this is the block and the medium, if you have a closer look at it, the way that the, the profile of the uh, concentrations, in this case, magnesium, the way that the magnesium is released, its profile, all these things can be combined together to create an equation like this. So this is another equation. So just imagine that if we have four components, five components, we will have five PDEs, and in addition to that, those five PDs, this will be the six PDs to solve. And we say it is implicit because we have a five function here. We solve this equation and it nicely tells us about where the interface is. How like this, imagine that we have an orthopedic, orthopedic screw in this case, inside, placed inside an electrolyte. And when we solve this equation, where phi is zero is actually the interface. So we solve this equation, and then we just ask the post-processing program to plot where phi is zero. And that's the, the morphology of the interface, and where morphology of the implant over time. And where phi is negative or positive, in this case, negative, it's outside and positive inside. So this is the way we actually track the interface in this work. Uh, yeah, in order to construct a computational model, because we have a couple of equations, it's not feasible to do that in, in lab. Yeah, but I call it sophisticated software programs. I mean, uh, commercial packages like ANSYS Abacus console. So we needed to discretize the PDs ourselves to have full control on the details and also being able to improve the efficiency of that as well. And as I said, uh, we used finite element method and level set for capturing the moving corrosion front. And the mesh is also adaptively refined on interface. And this is the reason that why uh, the computations need parallelization. So in this case, just the same screw, uh, the mesh would be something like this, that we have different labels for different regions of the domain. So we don't have really different materials. We have different regions, let's say. And then we refine the mesh on the interface. So in 3D, it will be yeah a lot of elements. Um, so this is also very important because it increases the numerical accuracy of the level set implementation. In order to implement the computational model, the mesh generation, a typical simulation for biodegradation usually consists of 10 million to 20 million of elements. And then we, when we implement the big formulation programs like FreeFam, the degrees of freedom for each PDE is two to four million. And it depends on the number of PDEs, number of chemical components that we wanna consider into the model. And then as a result, parallelization is essential. In order to do that, we have used a combination of our high performance domain decomposition techniques and high performance preconditioners and solvers and post-processing also done using parallel, uh, parallelized IO uh, approach. So some of the results just show you how the, all these things will work in action when we put them all together. On the left, you will see, yeah, this is the same model. Uh, on the left, it is uh, actually the material degradation. So the profile of the material as it degrades over time. And that uh, white region is just a zero isocontour of the phi function I talked about in level set, uh, level set section. And on the right, it is just the phi, uh, the zero isocontour of the phi. So by tracking just where phi is zero after solving the equation in each time step, we can have the change of morphology of the implant over time. 
This is another example for porous scaffolds that is that are widely used in tissue engineering for cell culture conditions. And as I said, the model is also uh, is able to capture the formation of a protective film, as you can see on the uh, left. And on the right, it is um, it shows how this uh, the, the the implant degrades and the materials are released to the medium. This is for a jawbone plate for a mandible plate that that is used on a mandible and it's degradable. That was actually for a master thesis project, but this simulation shows how the mandible degrades over time. And this simulation, I think, had almost something around 20 million of elements. This is a, a case that we used for uh, validation of the models. Uh, it was a narrow cuboid. We, had, uh, we have a partner in Germany that does the experiments for us. And this is a kind of geometry to represent the, the experimental setup that they have uh, done. So the formation of the protective film on the right and the magnesium ions released on the left. This is the way it, that it degrades. So these are same uh, animations. On the right, it is just post-process using a GPU. So shows how this uh, dissolves over time. And then, uh, as I said, it's also very important for us to capture uh, various, uh, let's say, side corrosion products. In this case, pH changes, because this enabled us to uh, validate the model, in this case, in different solutions, like saline solutions, buffered solution. And then uh, this, these are kind of quantitative results that we will have. We got out of that. So as you can see, the model has good agreement with the of experimentally obtained values. And what is ongoing now, and uh, this is actually one of the things that I'm going to work, um, take advantage of computing resources as available in computational science lab in the University of Amsterdam. It's trying to consider more interactions because it, the chemistry of uh, biodegradation can be very complex. And in order to capture it from using you know, computational approaches, it just increases the complexity. So in this case, you can see for a simple saline solution, these are the ions that we have there. This is actually what I showed you some results on. And then as we complex the solution, adding more uh, components, ions to that, the composition of the surface uh, protective layer will be more complex. And then capturing all these things from uh, a, mathemat a mathematical and computational perspective becomes more difficult. And it can be even more complex if we add cell culture conditions, proteins, cells, and also in vivo situations. So this, there is no end to this. Uh, and yeah, more advanced models can come every, every day, let's say. And then uh, just a very quick discussion on the work package too for adding perfusion models, uh, because perfusion model, as I said, uh, enables for capturing more realistic by reactor conditions, but also from the chemistry perspective, this is called this is what they call hydrodynamic conditions. Same concept, just moving fluid that enables them to remove the waste and add the things that they want that they want continuously. But this requires dealing with Navier-Stokes equation, adding more complexity to, uh, to the uh, model. And since it was expensive for me to use an external, uh, external CFT solver, I decided to implement my own. And I was uh, that was implemented in FreeFM. And, uh, but it requires also one extra step to compare the output of the CFT code with, uh, for example, with another well-known, well-established solver. In this case, I compared the output uh, of the CFT code with open foam with simple foam solver. So in order to compare, in order to construct the simulation for the perfusion, uh, it was declaration inside a chamber with indelt and outlet. That's what this was the, the experimental setup. This is the 3D representation of uh, the setup. It is again uh, from our partner in Germany. And then comparison between uh, you know, the fluid velocity magnitude uh, between our code and open flow shows uh, exactly the same pattern, not only qualitatively, but also quantitatively. And also for your streamlines, 
uh, from different views. I can see that yeah, the code produces the same pattern. Although OpenFOAM was far better at uh, capturing the boundary layer formulation, but fortunately I, I didn't need that. So uh, this, this is actually sufficient for me. And then uh, when I add the perfusion model to, for example, the biodegradation model, this is the kind of results that I will get, although this is still ongoing, so I don't have um, really presentation ready 3D results on this, but this is 2D uh, representation showing that, yeah, the, the material as is released is convected by a fluid flow. And then as you can see, the direction is a little bit directional as well, higher degradation on the left in comparison to what we have on the right. And then for the work package four, uh, just a couple of slides, a couple of notes on that. So I combine all these things together to a software I call Bideg that features, uh, that is actually a multifunctional 3D simulation code for corrosion modeling, for biodegradation modeling. And it features a cross-platform customizable user interface that has a basic pre and post processor as well, and is released as an open source software and is available freely on GitHub. Do the, the, the whole computational model as well as the user interface code. I mean, but what what, uh, what is also very important for me, uh, as I show you, what is essential is paralyzing the computations in order to increase the efficiency and reducing the computational times, uh, computation time. Sorry. So the first thing was actually distributing the mesh among the available resources. Uh, for doing that, I use high performance dom dom domain decomposition techniques available in FreeFem. But also in addition to that, it was very essential to solve the, how to solve the linear system of equations. So a very well-known technique is preconditioning equations, but it also differs which preconditioner to use. It differs from equation to equation. So for example, for reaction diffusion, part of the work I use AMG preconditioner, algebraic multigrid preconditioners, and field split preconditioner for flow solver. And then also lots of things on uh, using various solvers, how to improve, uh, the, for example, the parallelization benchmarks using different preconditioners and solvers. That was also one aspect of, the, of my work that I was also very interested in. And I also performed some scaling analysis on this results on, on this models, sorry. For example, strong scaling and weak scaling. Although as you can see, these are really, really, yeah, low numbers in comparison to the numbers that you are usually dealing with in the University of Amsterdam, but these are, you know, actually the resources that we had available in KLOWEN. Uh, easy, I mean, we didn't need any neg negotiation for bigger numbers. And then we had also some performance analysis on that to get the parallel portion of the code and also serial portion of the code. But as I said, more important than this is the combination of different peer conditioner sets and uh, solvers. So this is, the, for example, uh, the reason that we chose those combinations. But when I added the Floyd flow, the, the things uh, became a little bit more complicated. And I hope that, yeah, at, uh, during my stay here, as I have access uh, to better infrastructure, I will perform better benchmarking tests uh, on the Floyd flow solver, Floyd flow code as well. And let me finalize my uh, presentation with some notes on open source and open science and educational materials. So all the tools and uh, codes that are used in this work are open source. So if anyone grabbed my code and models from GitHub, they will be able to uh, reproduce the results and they don't need any license. So anything is free, anything is available and the code is also available, as I said. And that was uh, something I'm really happy about that it doesn't depend on any, on any commercial tool. But in addition to that, you know, what we want, what we really intended, what we tried to do was publishing building blocks, some building blocks of our code uh, like in a way that facilitated reproducibility and increases the outreach and transparency of the works. So for example, in this case, this is you know, just uh, one of the building blocks of our work that wasn't, I didn't present in this presentation was actually a set of uh, parameter estimation, sensitivity anal analysis and uh, UQ processes on, on these models. 
And then in the end, we decided to publish that building block just independently such that people see that what's going on internally in this work. But in addition to that, I was always interested, I've been always interested in uh, just uh, talking about the details of the employee techniques in a simplified language that everyone can add, take advantage of. There are a couple of examples. For example, this is for a course that we developed at Kaleoven that is related to mass transfer and tissue engineering. And this repository contains some materials discussing the computational aspects of it, both numerically and analytically. This is, for example, an applied introduction to numerical computing, including um, finite difference method and finite element method. And uh, I'm also doing, I, I've started a project. Uh, this is actually a weekend project of some trainings on open source uh, computational modeling. That's actually a YouTube project. It's, you just, I try to keep it up and continuously publish some stuff from the experiences that I gain in uh, working with these tools. Yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to say. I hope that I was uh, in time. Thank you so much for your attention.